So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm handling authentication and authorization on a SaaS I'm working on as a solo founder. So what I've just said actually implies a lot on how I'm doing auth for my system. And why is that? Let me actually show you my thought process on how I got to the solution that I got. And the first thing to disclose is that I actually want to ship an MVP as fast as possible to the hands of users. So I should not be developing something that users don't want to use at the end of the day. I know that I have customers, but I want to ship something fast as possible uh, and then iterate from there. So building an authentication from scratch requires some thinking. And I'm going to show you that decision process on how um, I'm handling this uh, in this video. By the way, this book here, The Lean Startup, goes uh, hand in hand with, I'm going to show you, it's not about developing applications per se, but the idea of going and developing something to give to the user as fast as possible and gather feedback from there, it's actually pretty important if you're working uh, on developing these applications and actually de developing them and deploying them to users. So uh, with that said, this is the first solution I went with, which I wanted to implement something very simple and intuitive for users to be on my application, authenticators. So I'm going to show you a magic link authentication flow that I have actually built. And then I can actually go through with you on the codes with what actually represents. So if you're actually interested in how to build the magic link, this is very much a free tutorial for you, but this is going to be important as well because this is going to lead into the, the other solutions that uh, I went with. So what I have initially built is this flow here. So let me walk you through this. So here we have an endpoint to create uh, or to start the authentication process. So we hit our servers with this endpoint, for example, and on the payload, we could send, for example, the email, just the email, no passwords, and then on the endpoint, we would basically do email validations with check and send, or in this case, just check if the magic link has already been sent and created. Uh, so we'd have, for example, we'd go to our user's database, we'd have a table for magic links, we'd check all of that. And if the magic link is not sent, we would generate one, communicate with our email provider and send a mail template a mail template for the confirmation email. So this is pretty quick to get started sending users into your application without requiring any password. So on this flow, I'm not storing anything so far. Now, this is just the first step of the flow because now comes the second step of this flow, which is when the user goes to his email provider and he's going to get an email like this with the codes or a confirmation link. and. Either you're using a passwordless or uh, a password authentication. Nowadays, it's common to just send a confirmation email to the user for the user to confirm his email just in case he's logging in with someone else's email. So you want to make sure that before you create a user, uh, you send an email to confirm that this email actually belongs to that user. So uh, we just send this user email and he didn't set any passwords. What's going to happen is that if he clicks this link or he pastes this code into the UI, uh, before going to, to the application and being redirected, we have a whole flow here and this is where it starts to, to become a lot of work. And this is what's going to happen when you click the link. We're going to confirm the payload. So here you have, uh, you send a payload token on a new endpoint. So for example, email dash confirm. And then the, the API is going to check if the magic link matches the code. We're going to create a user. We're going to also create a session. And I have highlighted create a session because this here is a lot of work that you might not be prepared or might not know how to do. You need to start the session. You need to then redirect the user to the app. And again, I highlighted start the session as well because I want to be a stateful authentication. I want to have control of the sessions if I want to invalidate a session on the backend, I want to be able to do this. I usually go with stateless authentication, but this time I'm going to go with stateful authentication. So I have to have a little bit more work uh, to do this. And by the way, if all of this sounds confusing and you have no idea uh, how to implement this, it's not that hard. And I actually teach all of this process, not for magic links, it's just for a session-based authentication. I teach this on the backend engineering with Go course. Uh, there's a free preview on my YouTube channel, uh, but here, for example, on the generating tokens, this is a half an hour 
video to just showing you how to create tokens and starting that session. Um, so you can see the, how this can become complex if you're doing this alone for a production application where the users are actually going to use. So after all of this and having implemented this and this worked and all of that, it, it had some edge cases, but I decided to step back a bit and think on what my authentication flow actually is because I know that I wanted some features like uh, user login, either password or passwordless, which I have just done with some caveats. I wanted some sort of social login integration. And this is easy on its own. You could implement with Google, Apple, GitHub. It's quite easy to do it on its own. But if you want to integrate all of these seamless with user login, then it's, it starts to get a bit of a problem and it takes to it starts to take a lot of time. So I decided to try a different route. And again, this is some assumptions I've taken, which the endpoint is going to be rate limited for the tokens. And there is a short token expiration for of this flow. So we need to actually build the refresh flow. So there's even more work here that I'm not showing that I didn't even implement, but it's needed for have a reliable authentication flow built. So to just quickly show you how that would look like in code, it's pretty simple. I have made here, and again, this is the same exact uh, template and structure I used on the backend engineering. So if you've taken that course, you're pretty familiar with what I'm showing you. So I'm not going to explain that much. So this is just that endpoint that I, I showed you, the starts email authentication, which what I'm doing is that I find the user by email. And if the user exists, or in this case, if the user doesn't exist, I log here for a security purposes. And then I just say that it's okay. So I'm not returning to the user that he doesn't exist for security purposes. So I'm obfuscating this. Then I check if there's a magic link in the store. So here I'm just fetching by the email and I get a magic link. And if the magic link does exist, I just send a conflict response saying that the magic link was sent. Then I just create a new magic link if the user doesn't have one and then I just create it. And then finally, you need to send this email to the user with the magic link. So this is the first flow. It's not that hard. There's a lot of code here, but it's pretty simple to understand. It's pretty much what I had on the diagram. Then the complete flow is pretty similar. So you get the magic link from your database. You check, you do some validations here if it's expired or not. And then finally, you create the user and a session and you delete all of the uh, the codes and magic links that were associated with that user. And now we have a user logged in into your application, basically. So you can see how simple this is, but there is more stuff missing, like the refresh tokens, the session creation, all of this. There is a lot of work to be done here. So this is where I started thinking, how could I improve uh, the reliability and building speed for my application, I started considering third party providers. So for example, there's auth providers like Quirk, Superbase. And again, I'm not <laughs> affiliated with any of these softwares. You guys know that I don't run ads here on the channel. Uh, but basically I started getting some problems and I actually implemented a small MVP for these auth providers, uh, which first they have a free trial and then they get expensive after getting a lot of traffic. So in the future, I would have to switch providers because my, my SaaS product is actually free. Uh, it has a paid tier, but still, if you have a product that all of the users have to pay, then it's completely fine to go with any of these providers. That's the, the goal, because if the user pays you, you can pay the provider as well without <laughs> losing profit at the end, right? Then the biggest disadvantage for me is that I had no control on the authentication and I could not make adjustments. So I wanted to make a little adjustments to the applications, to the authentication flow, and I couldn't. So that was let down for me. Then I started looking into open source providers, which I had no idea this was a thing. And I started using super tokens. Uh, also, Kicklock is very famous for enterprise. I have actually noted it here. But the cool thing about this is that it's a self-hosted solution, so I could host on my machine and basically I own this. I pay for what I use and I own the machine and the code. So at the end of the day, if I wanted to switch something, I could switch because I own the machine. I have the database on my hands and every data is on my sites. And the good thing is that I don't have to implement the auth management solution, uh, but I can modify it. So this for me was a big take because I could speed up a lot and make the, adjust the adjustments I needed. So either decision I took 
I had to make this abstract so that I could change it in the future if I needed. So this is where it starts going into software uh, good practices and all of that. And so this is the final solution that I have went with. So pretty much what's happening here is that we still have an authentication flow. So anything that goes to slash auth, I'm going to redirect to the auth service. So what is this auth service? It's just another service running on a different machine on a Docker image. So I'm just booting this up on my local machine on Google Cloud or AWS or anything. I can just put up this uh, auth service. And then this auth service communicates with a user's database and this database I own. This is a Postgres database that I have instantiated. So it's mine. The data here is mine. But when I run one of these open source solutions, they create tables to run migrations. So I don't have to do any of these. And again, this is just an isolated service. If I want, I can just replace this in the future very easily with my own service. And in this case, I'm using super tokens to host this on my end. So they just provide their core and anything that starts with slash auth, I, rec I redirect to them and I don't need to think about it. Um, and this works beautifully because as you're going to see, I'm going to show you the whole flow and how it is on my application. When the user logs in with authentication with email or any auth provider, they send an email and they use my email provider. So I'm not even coupled to, to them again. So I can just inject my email provider and my database. So I still own all of these. Just the logic for authenticates, all the good practices are handled by this Docker image that I run locally. So yeah, this is a whole overview. Let me actually show you how this works in practice. So here I'm at the application and I've just hit the localhost 3000 and I've got redirected to the sign in sign up portal. So this comes out of the box and any request I make here and anything here is fully configurable. I can change this UI, I can make anything here and it's running. Um, I can actually show you that here I have a container running the, the super tokens uh, authentication uh, engine. So I'm going to, for example, let's create a new user. Let me show you the whole flow. And here you can already see that we got a check mark because this user does not exist. So we got all of these features out of the box. So let me just sign up and we need to verify our email as I showed you before. And so we just got this email here. I can see that this template still needs some work. I got the customization here. So we get, hey, and the user ID, of course, we are going to send the username and all of that in the future. And here, when I click this, it's going to confirm the link. This token has expiration as well. And this email was sent using my domain, my provider. So uh, I'm not worried with coupling because I own this domain here. So if you just click on confirm, you're going to basically be redirected to the application and we can just hit continue and I'm logged in successfully into the node-based application. So all of this UI here is a temporary. I'm going to show you in the future in the video uh, if you guys are interested. But now we have authentication and I can make authenticated requests. And by the way, just to give you an overview of what this project is, this is an application to take your digital notes taking to the next level. We're going to send you emails every day with highlights and notes that you have taken from your digital books. For example, I'm going to sync here with the Kindle integration. You can also export off your data to Notion, JSON, and of course, this is while well, <laughs> work in progress. I'm going to just sync now. So this is going to sync some of the books I have on Kindle, of, actually all of the books I have on Kindle automatically. I'm going to close the tab now. If I click here on library, I get all of the books on my Kindle library here. And I can actually click them and I can see the all of the highlights I have taken on these books. And the cool thing is that tomorrow morning I'm gonna head, I'm gonna get an email with some of these highlights that I have just taken. And this all works because I have an authenticated session. For example, something that also works is that you can go to any article. For example, I'm reading this new article from Martin Fowler using the Strangler Fig with mobile apps. And for example, I want to uh, highlight this note here. I want to make this a highlight for me. So I can just right click it and save to Notebase. What's going to happen is that the text was saved to Notebase. And if I go back and refresh, you can see that on the articles, I've got this highlight uh, started here. And behind the scenes, there's a lot of stuff happening. This is a Chrome extension and it's sending authentication and all between uh, these requests. So 
of this is secured authentication and sends to um, the database. Okay. So what are the main takeaways from this video? It's that you don't need to always build your authentication. You don't need to always build authentication. And this is very important because as engineers, we want to build everything ourselves. And I had that urge as well. But as I started to get into, I started to learn that this was going to take me a lot more time. And as a solo founder, uh, this was not good for me. I can always in the future send out education layer as long as I built this module. So I'm also not a security expert. So my judgment is not the best way I was tell, testing this and giving to the hands of users. Also wanted to ship fast. And I actually want to ship a product by the end of this year. So this is really important for me to have an authentication taken care of in the start. So let me know if you guys would like to see more videos like this in the future where I document building this product and my journey. And hopefully you manage to get some key insightful uh, takeaways that I had uh, and they apply to your journey and maybe inspire you to build that product that you always wanted.